So we're revisiting the Holy Shaft and the Holy Circle. If you saw this program before, this is incredible. This is just an incredible discovery. You know, I'm no, no glory to me. What's here is powerful. It's just powerful. So just a recap, where in Giza is it? Well, here's a top view of uh, Khufu Khafre. You can see right in the middle of that circle. That's where the Holy Shaft is. This, this humble appearing uh, feature of the Giza Plateau, which no Egyptologists talk about. They don't know anything about it. Oh, it's Greco-Roman, they say. So it's this forgotten item that's connected to everything. It's a square in a circle connecting heaven and earth. You know, God and man. It's a powerful, humble symbol connected to everything. That's what we're showing here. It's unbelievable. So is it planned by him? You know, it seems to me it's got to be. I'll show, talk about this in a, in a minute here. So there's a a picture of it. You know, the humble holy shaft connected to everything at Giza. Let's say, where does it point? We've talked about this. You know, I put together some field notes. We showed this, you know, exactly 2,100 feet to the entrance of the Wall of the Crow, 4,000 feet to the Solar Cross, Menkar, exactly 2,300 feet. It's incredible. It's an exact even hundred number of feet from almost everything at Giza. Wow. Okay. So, and to top it off, guess how far it is to go around the square of the holy shaft. Okay. So, here we go. You can see that... Uh, uh, fence sort of thing they've got around it, which is uh, right exactly above where the borders of it are. Just measure it yourself on Google Earth. Exactly a hundred feet. This is incredible. Okay, so there's uh, you know a top view of uh, all the lines I I drew on on Google Maps, uh, Google Earth I should say, and so you can see the four points that where you, I did the best I could to outline the holy shaft there. And again, you know here's the. The picture from, from Google Earth, perimeter 100 feet. Wow. It's like incredible. Okay, now we talked about how the tree of life, this ancient uh, Hebrew Kabbalah uh, symbol, it, it, it fits right on the Giza Plateau, the 10 Sephiroths. And just one thing I think is so interesting. So these are the 10, these, these gold globes there. And usually this one, knowledge, is not given. But look where it is. It's over the, the western Khufu boat pit, the one that's being taken. Well, now they're taking them both, but being taken to the new gem museum. So it's not there, but it is there. Knowledge, you know, what we learn about Khufu. And then this is where the holy shaft is. The Sephiroth that's stand, Tiferoth that stands for beauty. So this humble shaft is holding the beauty. And why is this, you know, tree of life angled? Okay, well, guess what? That angle points directly to the Fibonacci origin. That esoteric symbol symbolizing eternity where I take special tourists to, for these just mystical, magical moments we have there. It's unbelievable. This is pointing to eternity, square and circle. Okay, well, this all this stuff is golden. You know, you, you know how the, the golden ratio works. Green uh, circle there is to the red as the red is to the blue. You know, that's the golden, golden angle. It's 137.5 degrees, and you can do it linear like this. Okay, so A over B equals A plus B over A. All right. If the circumference of the green circle is 432, so if you take that and 432 as a circumference, then the diameter is 137.5 which happens to be the golden angle. Unbelievable. Okay, so if you take the height of the Great Pyramid, 146.6 meters, okay, according to a sailor's chart I looked at, the distance to the horizon is 43.2 kilometers. 432 everywhere. Okay, so pi times 43,200, which is the Great Pyramid is a replica of planet Earth at that scale, 43,200. So multiply that by pi, and you get 135,716. Okay, big deal. Well, that in square meters is the surface area of the Great Pyramid, excluding the peak. Okay, incredible. Now, I've shown before this incredible 4 or 5 pi triangle. It, just like there's a phi perfect little triangle, well, I, well I've tried to discover a pi, and I did. If you say the height to the uh, top without the, without the pyramid, without the capstone, and then uh, the four and the five uh, are uh, on what's there now, you get this perfect four or five pi triangle, okay? But what's interesting, again, this four or five pi triangle is 
on what's there now, which doesn't include the capstone. So one thing I conclude from this pi makes imperfect things eternal. Wow. And today is the summer solstice and Father's Day. So the Creator, the Father, thank you. Okay, so here's a top view of some of the lines I've drawn on Google Earth that are exactly 100 feet uh, from the, the holy shaft. Okay, so let's look at the Hema unit template though real quick. So I've talked about this before. Okay, so there uh, the boat pit pointers point to the southwest corner. You've already got the notch, the northeast corner. The air shaft goes through the south there, and there's also an air shaft that goes through the north. So this template is plainly defined uh, on Giza. I didn't make this up. We call it the Hemiunu template, and each side of the Hemiunu template is exactly 200 royal cubits, which is 104.7 meters. Okay, right there. There it is. Guess what? Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Pi. Come on. Divided by, here we go, the speed of light equals... 104.7 at a scale of, of a billion. Okay, unbelievable. There's, I'm going to do a lot more with this. These two, you know, powerful things, the speed of light, which sets a standard in physics. You know, it's a barrier beyond which things can't go, according to some. And pi, obviously this, this uh, infinite number, this irrational but beautiful transcendental number, okay? But you know, the, if you've been to the uh, National Air and Space Museum, the, they put the solar system, they tried to put it to a human scale. So you got the sun and Pluto pictured there, which is about a 10 or 15 minute walk. And they so they have the planets, the actual size they would be in scale, and they use this scale. So it was one to 10 billion. So the, so the these museum curators used the scale of one to 10 billion to try and help you make you, uh, help you understand the, the dimensions of the solar system. So look what Hemiunu did. Pi in the speed of light in a one billionth scale. 104.7. Oh my goodness, there's so much more there. We'll do more on that. Okay, just a quick shot. Da Vinci Vitruvian magic. Okay, you see in the lower left-hand corner this five times great pyramid size we found on the Giza Plateau, defined by Giza. Okay, so there's a top view of Giza. Okay, so if you lay the Vitruvian man over that the way you're supposed to, I'm, I just found some incredible things. So there's another program in that, where these pointers go. And guess what? Okay, you've seen the Philosopher's Stone. Well, look at this famous Meyer uh, 1618 drawing of the Philosopher's Stone. What is he doing? He's tracing some things onto a map. That's what I was just doing. Ooh, there's more to come. Stay tuned on that. So the 100-foot magic, connections from the holy shaft on Giza. Let's just look at some of them. But first of all, why do I think Hemiunu is involved in this? Well, I showed you, you know, the Hemiunu template here. Okay, so you take the northern border uh, of, of that, of that uh, Hemiunu template, and it totally touches the top of Hemiunu's tomb, which is in the western field, you know, west of the Great Pyramid. And if you go exactly through the center of the Great Pyramid, it touches exactly the southern part of Hemiunu's tomb. Is Hemiunu showing us he's connected to the Great Pyramid and all these mysteries here at Giza? Okay, so the Magic 100s. Let's look at just some of them here, okay? So, to the northeast corner of the third Menkara Satellite Pyramid, exactly 2,700 feet. Wow. Okay, the Sphinx Temple to the southwest corner, exactly 1,100 feet. Oh my goodness. What else have we got here? Okay, to the Queen's Boat Pit, 1,400 feet exactly to the center of that boat pit. Okay, here's Khufu's Satellite Pyramid, which is southeast of the big, you know, Khufu Pyramid. This is the Satellite Pyramid. And so if you take that entrance down to where it actually enters the pyramid to that point, because again, I'm not picking points. You could cherry pick this and pick a point just somewhere. And probably since the, since the holy shaft is 25 feet, you could fudge it a little bit. I'm trying to pick points that are like major points to show this. I'm not fudging this. This is exactly 900 feet to where that Khufu satellite goes there. Okay, let's look at the five-time uh, Great Pyramid that, that we found here on Giza. Others have found this too. Okay, well, the, the top point, the top vertice is defined by the Great Pyramid, the center. The, the left vertice is defined by the center of Menkara, but the right is not the right vertice isn't defined by anything. So I thought, well, if it's an even hundred from the holy shaft, that's like an indicator that this is really a five-time pyramid that's on Giza. I'm not making this up. And so sure enough, 
2,100 feet exactly to the right vertice of the five times Great Pyramid. Wow. Okay. The tomb of Nefertiti, the daughter of Khufu. It's out in the western field. I got permission to go out there. Look, the southeast corner, exactly 2,600 feet. Okay. Now, to the Sphinx, you could figure, well, the Sphinx is pretty long. You could probably fudge it. So I thought, let's pick a spot on the Sphinx that's like a famous spot, that, like a standard spot. Okay. The Dream Stella. Between the paws of the Sphinx, everybody gets the, that has the special, that pays the big money to get special permission to go in there, they have their picture taken, you know, by the, by the Dream Stella. It's exactly 1,000 feet to the Dream Stella. Oh, my goodness. Here's the funerary temple of Khafre, right east, the, the, the mortuary temple. Look at that southeast part of that portico there, exactly 500 feet. And this, oh, my goodness, the Osiris shaft, this incredible you know, find the, the, the deep, deep down, and, you know, you go these, these crickety ladders and go all the way down the mysterious Osiris shaft, exactly 200 feet from the holy shaft, all right? The uh, first satellite pyramid of Menkara to the center, 2,500 feet. This is a little-known uh, item on the Giza Plateau, this, this stone outcropping, which comes at the end of what some people call the laner line, the line that connects the southeast corner of the three major pyramids, goes right to this stone outcropping right before the escarpment that goes down. It's a mysterious thing we'll talk about some other time, exactly 1,700 feet to this stone outcropping. And I'll end with this one, the Solar Cross. This is a mysterious place that the, the energy people say is the highest energy point on Giza. You're not allowed to go here. I went here took a little expedition last time I was there. Uh, you know, it's, it's got this history when people could go there of what's there. There's this deep shaft. You know, it's this high energy point. I could talk a little bit later about its etymology. This is it. All right, so uh, I went out there with Lord Kingston. We uh, took a journey out there. We had a route mapped out, and uh, we were determined to learn more about the Solar Cross. This was like a a day or two before my tourists came on uh, our, my uh, last tour in April. We're doing another tour in October, by the way, so, uh, you know, sign up for that. It's going to be on the new website pretty soon. I'll put the prices and the itinerary and all that. It's a good speed for me. It's okay. I don't, I don't have to go fast. So I'll let you finish out by listening to some of the talk I did here with Lord Kingston. I got talking about some Robert Grant and Alan Green things, so you can listen in. There's so many ways you can turn a word like Rasta that are real. I'm not saying some somebody's faking, but you can, there's enough fudge factors there that you can kind of make it fit your thing. Assuming you're in the game and you're truly trying to, you know, uh, sort it out, decipher it. But to me, ultimately, the symbols need to lead to a reality. Now, if you've been following Alan Green at all, he's, a, he's the associate of Robert Grant. They did a live today. Will Wire was on there. Back at where I lay, oh, the fun of yesterday that's left me tired and torn. In, in his uh, decrypting of the King James Bible that, that uh, John D had a hand in, you know, Shakespeare, you know, the, in the title page of the Old Testament and New Testament, John D and Devere. Come on, hey, you <laughs> stop that. Be nice. Be nice. <laughs> Stop it. You be good. And uh, so, anyways, he found two mentions of the Ark. Two mentions 